relatively short and across the line. I would likely see the player struggle to shallow it out. So as they start working down, the hand path or the hands might kick out in front of them in an effort to shallow the club down, causing the hands to be too far in front of the body. Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, we are gonna be covering the across the line golf swing. So where the club starts to point more in this direction. And is it a good thing? Is it a bad thing? Can it work for you? Does it not work for you? And we're gonna be covering all those important pieces in this session. So I hope you enjoy and let's get into it. So the across the line golf swing. Many players have won from this position. Okay, so this is where the golf swing works to the top and the club starts to look more that way. So we would describe that as across the line, down the line being straight down the target line, laid off being when the shaft starts to point too much in the other direction. And if you are a person that has this across the line golf swing, can that work for you? And the answer is yes, there are a few matchups that you need to make that work. And there are some positions that we see that not work so well from. So the first thing we're gonna look at is length of swing. So if you are a player that has quite a long swing, so the club gets almost past parallel, you get your arms relatively high, then you are someone that can probably cope with something a little more across the line. So when the club gets up, high and long and goes across the line. There are good players that have played from there. I think um, Bubba Watson has played from there in the past. You've got Phil Mickelson that has played from those positions in the past. So there, it can work. And the reason it works is when the club is across the line or long and across the line, the player has time to move the club into a more shallow state to help them come from the correct direction and then hit the ball nicely. Whereas a player that would be slightly shorter in length, so if I was to work the club not very far back but across the line, I don't have bundles of time to then twizzle the club into position and make a nice shallow contact. It makes life more difficult. So if you're a player that doesn't have a long swing, you will probably want to explore something a little bit more on plane or even a bit more laid off. So the club is preset into this more shallow position that the club can then fall down from. So that would be one or two of the matchups that go alongside that. So. If you are someone that is across the line, and let's just assume a little bit short for this video's sake. So this is a position that's not necessarily gonna work for you. What would we likely see? Well, from someone that gets it relatively short and across the line, I would likely see the player struggle to shallow it out. So as they start working down the hand path or the hands might kick out in front of them in an effort to shallow the club down, causing the hands to be too far in front of the body causing this right arm to potentially be too steep and on top and the shaft working more through the neck or shoulder line and the struggling to make good contacts from there. The second problem I would tend to see from someone being too far across the line is as the club is pointed more in that direction, it is common that the handle will trace back down in the direction it points, sometimes causing the players to be too far from the inside get a little frosty and struggling with path and strike. So again, we would tend to see the guys that get it more across the line. I would say we see this more from the better golfer, but the guys that get it across the line, they will figure out a way to come back down from the inside. And sometimes that can cause things to be too shallow. So there are two opposite ends of the spectrum there. The guy that swings it short and across the line, and the club works down too vertical because he can't save it, or the guy that swings it across the line, but I would say quite skilled at getting the club back down from the inside. The club is pointing from this manner and it goes in there. So there are a couple of potential problems that you'll face if you are in this position. So in this part of the video, I'm gonna be discussing a little more around the mechanics of where the across the line can come from, and hopefully you pick up one or two things from there. So. For me, let's talk about the very first one, which is over rotating in the backswing. So your club could be tracking on a wonderful plane. It can be on plane all the way, but 
if you start to overturn the hips, overturn the shoulders, so as I start to rotate, moving over 100 degrees of turn, from this angle, you'll start to see how the club just continues to work in that direction. So sometimes it might just be as simple as over rotating. And again, is that necessarily a bad thing for you? Not sure, it's a big power source, but then some guys might really struggle to return the club in the correct manner if they're overturning. The second potential cause could be wrist angles as you work to the top of the swing. If you have your wrist angles that are overextended, and overcupped, meaning lots and lots of upward motion and lots and lots of cuppy motion, you'll start to see that as I do that, that potentially puts the club way over there. Whereas if I was someone that had more of a flat wrist or bowed wrist, you can see again where the club can point. So wrist angles can potentially be a big one as well. So for someone that gets the club face into a slightly weaker position, um, and a longer position that can potentially happen as well. And again, is that a bad thing for you? It worked for Phil Mickelson and it potentially worked for Bubba Watson. So it's all about matching that into your game. But again, from a mechanics point of view, that is gonna be another reason for the club to travel across the line. Probably the most common one I see will be the next one, which is your arms turning too much internal. So if I just take my right arm in front of me and I twist it to the left, this is probably the most common one. It affects the range of motion and it will stand the shaft on end. So into the backswing here, as I make a backswing, if I start twisting my arm more to the left, you'll see how that starts to flare this elbow out. The shaft stands starts to stand up on end. And if I keep turning from there, that's another thing that can happen. So we get a lot of arm lift. We get this forearm more on top of the left rather than underneath the left. And that will keep the club face or tends to keep the club face quite closed. But where I've run out of a range of motion now, I might have to do things in an effort to shallow it out. So the way your shoulder and forearm works can really, in, really encourage the shaft to stand up on end. So again, if you are that sort of player, you may want to look into more of an externally rotated position into the backswing. Now, not loads, but just someone that rotates their arms just a little bit more round to the right will get that club more laid off. But then you have to be a little bit wary of that because that can potentially open the face. This is why it's really important to identify understand and identify your pattern and do you need to change it? But if you are someone that needs to change it, then here are some potential things that you can certainly look for. So the three big things for me from a mechanical standpoint into where the club can get across the line to recap are, you could be someone that over rotates and gets the club working over there. You could be someone that hinges their wrists incorrectly and gets it a bit cupped and certainly from this angle, overextended. The final reason being that the forearms on, and shoulders stay too internal, so this right arm stays a bit on top for too long and the club starts to stand up and then I add rotation and the club works a little bit across the line. So I hope that makes a little bit more sense into where these positions come from. It's important to understand which one is relevant to you rather than try and fix them all. So do seek some help from a professional if, uh, if you wanted to dive a little deeper into that. But I hope that helps a lot of you. So thanks again and I'll see you soon.